Hey YouTubers, I have a testimony video for you. Uh, I have other stuff as well, but I'm here at Walmart Distribution, and I find this funny because a lot of people that I watch, um, I like watching, you know, healing videos, street ministry kind of stuff, and a lot of people <laughs> get healed up in Walmart. So I'm at Walmart Distribution, and here's one of the yard dog trucks. Uh, you can see that Walmart this distribution has just hundreds of doors, hundreds of trailers, hundreds of everything, and there's there's hundreds of trailers behind where I'm parked right now. So it's a huge place. I was down over here dropping my trailer off. I was putting it in a door, and then I look over, and there was one of those orange yard dog trucks, and the guy gets out, and he's like rubbing his shoulder, and you could tell his shoulder was hurting him. But I couldn't really catch him, you know, I couldn't really get over there. So I ended up putting my uh, trailer in the door and did some other things. And then I come over here to, uh, you see this little shed looking thing? Um, I went over there, and here goes another one of them. But I went over there, and the... Uh, the guy that I saw, I walked into that, into where that door was. I started walking up by that shed thing, and guess who pulls up? That guy pulls up in his truck, you know, out of this whole giant, huge parking lot. That guy pulls up at the exact time that I'm walking up, and he gets out of his truck, and he's walking up the stairs at the exact same time as me, and he says, you know, beautiful weather we're having, right? So I'm like, oh, man, this is divine appointment time. You know, there's no way that this is an accident because this whole huge parking lot, you know, for me to cross paths with this guy at the exact second, to me, that was just an open door. And I said, hey, man, can I ask you a question? Uh, I saw you, you know, I saw your shoulder hurt. You know, you got a uh, injury or you got some pain. What's going on? And he just told me he felt like he had a pinched nerve or something. And I said, um, you know, I don't, I don't tell you this is just a testimony, but as an encouragement and kind of a how-to, you know, a way that you can approach this also. And I just said, uh, there he goes. I just, uh, there he goes. <laughs> um, I put my, uh, put my hand on his shoulder and I just said, well, first I said, um, you know, hey, man, I, I've been to Guatemala. I was down there on a mission trip, and I prayed for a lot of people, and I saw God heal them. Can I pray for you? And he's like, yeah, sure. So I put my hand on his shoulder, and I just said, pain, I command you to go. I command this pinched nerve to, to unpinch and muscles relax, and I just command this be healed right now in Jesus' name. And I said, try it out. And he said it was better. Prayed for him one more time, and, uh, you know, it just... It was totally improved. So, you know, I say that as an encouragement so that you can step out and do it too because I started by watching guys like Tom Fisher, uh, started by watching guys like Pete Cabrera. I've met both of these guys face to face. Um, check out Tom Fisher's new DVD on Amazon. He's putting out a, a movie about, you know, a lot of the street healing encounters that he's had. You know, he's one of the guys that taught me a lot. So, um, you know, I just wanted to share that, and then there's like this, uh, there's this other experience that I had about a week ago that I felt was like a great illustration of faith. You know, it was it was a simple thing, but I felt like it was really profound um, because it it has a lot to do with how praying for the sick works. Um, I was at this warehouse like a week ago, and it was taking them a while to load the trailer, so I was standing inside the door. And I'd been standing there for a little while, and one of the guys says to me, Hey, um, you want to just go, like, chill out in the break room for a little bit? And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, because I was standing up, so... Um, so I go in the break room, and I turn the light switch on, and nothing happens. But I left it on, and I just sat down, and I started, uh, you know, had some Sprite and some Doritos and, you know, some health food, right? You know, some trucker food. I'm trying to eat healthier, but man, you can't always do it. Um, 
So I'm just sitting in there chilling out. And like five minutes later, the lights come on. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, God, I get it. And it's such a cool illustration because that's the way that praying for the sick works. Um, I use this as an example of like Jesus cursed the fig tree, right? I know I bring this up a lot, but it's because it's such a important lesson. It's like when you believe in your heart, that's the light switch. It, it allows the electricity to flow. You know, the Holy Spirit flows like water. He flows like electricity. That's why laying on of hands, um, you know, seems to work so well. I know there's, there's other ways to do it. You know, you can command and you can, like I've prayed for people over the phone and stuff. But, um, you know, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, he said, let no man eat fruit from you ever again. And he didn't see a visible change, but his belief switch was on, right? He believed that what he said would happen. And when they came back the next day, Peter said, Lord, the tree that you cursed has withered up from the roots. There he is again. But, you know, Jesus said, the tree that you cursed has withered up from the roots. How would you do it? And Jesus went on to explain that this is in Mark 11, 22 through 24. Jesus said, whosoever shall command this mountain to be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, he will, you know, whatever he prays, believing he will receive or whatever he believes uh, will come to pass, you know. So that's, the, that's like the illustration of the light switch. When you pray for the sick, you have to have your light switch on, and your light switch is the belief. You know, so like the guy with the shoulder, I say, in the name of Jesus, I command pain, you come out, and I command this be healed in the name of Jesus. And no matter what I see on the spot, I don't turn the switch off. I never say, oh, this didn't work. I never say, oh, well, I guess uh, it didn't happen. Because when you do that, you turn the switch off. Like when Jesus said, when you command this mountain to be cast in the sea, do not doubt in your heart. Um, if you go back to Daniel chapter 2, it explains what the mountain is. Um, Daniel 2 is the dream of Nebuchadnezzar where, you know, it was the statue with the head of gold and the chest of silver. And it goes on to interpret that a mountain is a kingdom. So you're speaking to the kingdom of the devil. You're speaking to the works of the devil. You know, it says that Jesus uh, went about doing good works and he came to destroy the works of the devil. You know, so that's what we're here to do also. Um, so I hate when you lose a thought in the middle of it. When Jesus spoke to it, when he spoke to the mountain, when he spoke to the tree, he believed in his heart, and even though he didn't see it, he never turned the switch off. And then what happened? The very next day, the thing did what he, what he told it to do. So it's the same with healing. Like the light switch thing totally illustrates how it works, that when you pray, command something, and uh, you know just believe in your heart that whatever you say will come to pass, and then it says that you will have it. That's scripture. That's what that's what Jesus himself taught regarding this specific issue. So if you turn the light switch off, then the lights will never come on. I did another video on this, but the um, the audio was really good, but the video got all goofed up. Um, if you'd like to hear like a deeper, you know, more scriptural teaching of that, um, I'll leave a link for that. But you know, I wanted to tell you one more thing. Um, for years, I had been um, having having issues with my knee. Like last year, I went to the Kingdom Awakening con uh, uh, conference with Pete Cabrera and a bunch of people there. And uh, FBI Art Montgomery, uh, you can find him on Facebook. He prayed for my leg, and it was like my my foot rotated in because I used to stand like this. And I used to walk like this, you know, these are my feet. Well, he prayed, and now my feet are aligned. They they face the same direction. Well, for years, I've been popping my knee um, out of habit, just, you know, kind of relieve some tension, whatever. Well, a couple days ago, I popped it again, 
and something went wrong. So I've had this sharp pain behind my kneecap and it even interferes with my driving, you know, where I've had trouble um, just moving my leg to uh, the gas pedal, to the, to the brake pedal, and I've had trouble getting out of the truck, you know, so it's really interfered with my job. And, um, but I'm coming from a position of belief. I'm coming from a position that the Bible says, by his stripes I am healed, that uh, Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who heals all your diseases. Um, Matthew 8, I think it's verse 17-ish, 16 through 18, somewhere around there, says that, and Jesus healed them all, fulfilling the prophecy from the book of Isaiah that said that Jesus uh, carried our sicknesses and bore our, our diseases, you know, bore our infirmities, things like that. So, even though I feel the pain, I walk by faith and not by sight. And I say, I am healed in the name of Jesus. This will be healed. You know, because I'm 36. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life hobbling around with a knee problem. It's not going to happen. Because I believe Scripture more than I believe this. Um, a couple months ago, I canceled my health insurance because the whole Obamacare thing, you know, my premium more than doubled. And I said, okay, well, we're coming to a time where Obamacare is going to be forced upon people. And if you don't have it, I think it's going to be linked to the mark of the beast. If you don't have it, you won't be able to buy or sell. You know, the Obamacare talks about a class two implantable device. So I'm coming from the position of, okay, well, if I would have to live without it, then then I need to be able to walk by faith now and live without it now. You know, if I tell people that Jesus heals today and that, you know, they can be healed and that I can be healed, I need to practice what I preach. So I canceled my government health care or I canceled my, you know, just regular health care. And my plan A is Jesus care. You know, I'm trusting scripture. I'm trusting, you know, James where it says, is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders and, you know, he'll be anointed with oil and the prayer of the sick will save uh, the prayer for the, the prayer of faith will save the sick. Why does it say save? Why does it not say heal? Because, you know, Jesus, when he died on the cross, this is all in Isaiah 53. When I when Jesus died on the cross, not only did he pay for all of your sin, he also paid for all of your sickness, all of your disease, all of your infirmity when he took the stripes, when he was whipped. You know, so it says that the prayer of faith will save the sick. You know, so it's like save and heal. It's like salvation for your body. You know, Jesus on the cross is salvation for your spirit. You know, um, deliverance is salvation for your soul. So... I take these scriptures, and even though I'm feeling pain, you know, when I walk up the stairs, I'm saying, I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am healed in the name of Jesus. This will not stick to me in the name of Jesus. I will be free from this. So, you know, I would like your prayers, but I would like for you to come at it from the angle that I'm telling you to come from. You know, come from authority. Come from commanding in the name of Jesus, because... As sons and daughters of God, we have the fullness of, of the Holy Spirit in us. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. You know, and Jesus taught his apostles and disciples, you heal the sick. You know, uh, I think it's Mark 13, 34 talks about a parable where Jesus was like a uh, a master who, who left his left his place to his servants, and it says that he gave authority to his servants, and he went on a long journey. You know, so Jesus is there saying that he gave authority to his servants. So if you would, pray for me, commanding healing. So in the name of Jesus, I command Andy's knee to be healed. You know, not the old like, oh God, please, I beg you, please. So... I'm going to be healed of this. This is not going to stick to me. And um, 
you know, I'll report back because this is going to heal in Jesus' name. Um, I think that's all I've got for you right now, but I have some other things lined up that I want to do videos on, and I look forward to doing those in the near future. So until then, God bless.